Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Local Chat. Folks, it is episode 16. You know what that means? We've been doing this for 16 episodes, which is kind of crazy. Joining me today is a man who hides in the shadows. It's Ian Gibson. Listen, they're dark for a reason. <laughs> also joining me is a man who created God of War. Kyle Bailey, how are we? I did. I'm going to start calling myself Cory Barlog. It's, you know... <laughs> You know, honestly, it, it's got a nice ring to it. Kyle Corey Barlog Bailey. KCBB. KCBB. Oh. KCBB. That's real quick at my company. For whatever reason. <laughs> what is this? For whatever reason, there was somebody whose name, his initials are RG, but nobody called him RG. And somebody else joined the company whose initials were RG and they're at like the same management level. And they were what? like, well, we can't call you by your name. So we have to call you RG too. And it was like, <laughs> what? Nobody's using the initials, period. Oh so it's not its not like there's an RG and now there's an RG. It's just a person and a person. RG but now we have two. to... Go, I'm just like, this is so... St and they're like, this is RG2, blah, blah, blah. This is a cool guy. And I'm just like, don't be cool. You're a 40-year-old executive. Nobody cares. Uh, this guy's actually lesser than the other RG. So mm. just make sure he's the two. Um, <laughs> otherwise, just, things will be confusing. Little less than symbol in front of RG. That's mm -hmm. like when there was that brief... Uh, in America, that brief racist moment. No, but w where it's like the teacher's like, oh, okay, I'm going to give you an English name because I can't pronounce that. It's like, <laughs> I know you're trying to do a nice thing, lady, but it's not a nice thing. I will say, I will say the opposite has happened to me, which is that Ian in French apparently is like Yuan. Like it's really <laughs> weirdly pronounced and I kind of like it. I've had somebody say Yuan Gypsum and I was like, you know what? Not bad. I kind of like it. I'll I take a question. Like it's like Ian, it. Ewan McGregor. Yeah. <gasps> You're Ewan McGibson. I Ewan am. How's well, Obi-Wan? We're the... Mm, mm. That's great. You motorcycle? Uh, folks, we're a gaming podcast. No, we know motorcycle. <laughs> we know motorcycle. Uh, <laughs> we're just having fun. Um, if you like video games, then you can catch us weekly here Thursdays. Um, first, before we get into the news, we got to talk about what we have been playing and to start us off today, Kyle Bailey, what have you been playing? I've been playing a lot. Uh, I'll start with Warzone because it was literally the last game I played today. And I got as far as the menu system because there was a huge freaking update. And none of the servers worked. Yay. Oh, that's right. That's because they rolled out the new the new map, right? Do you know anything about that controversy? I was kind of following it. It's the new old map. It, it's the... it's just the same map with a redone skin basically for 1984. Yeah. Um, yeah. I still have not gotten to play it. I mean, they blew up the old map with a Ooh. nuke and yeah. I didn't get to play that either because it was a limited time and I was working when it was like able to, you were able to play it. Um, yeah. And then I, I have, I've, I've seen some videos of what the new menu looks like, but nothing beyond that. So Warzone is, is a, a really bad menu simulator right now. Yeah, yeah. The only thing I've heard was I saw, because they dropped the map, like, I'm going to say, like, four or five hours ago. And yeah. I, I saw some reactions of people hopping in there and just being like, so it's the exact same map, and you've been working a year on this. And I'm like, <laughs> that doesn't look like a good reaction. When, when, I heard, when I heard that that's what they were doing, or people were, like, speculating that that's what they were doing, I was like, yeah. well, like there'll probably be another map. Like maybe it's a smaller, different map. Like, like I think PUBG did the same thing yeah. where they, they had originally like the PUBG map. And then there was yeah. like within six months or eight months, there was, there was like a way bigger one and then a much smaller that sort of thing, but they didn't, they just no. reskinned the current map. Yeah, um, yeah. I think, I think it's a cool idea. Like I think, cause the whole idea is in modern warfare. So let's, let's just say like 2018 and then they're going back to 1984 Mm -hmm. So that's like, what, 34 year difference. I think it would be, I think if they put 12 months worth of effort into it, which I'm not saying they didn't, but clearly they didn't. Um, if they actually put that effort into it, they could have done cool things. Like I'm just imagining like there's a grocery store in the current map, but when you go back, it's actually a corner market with like a much smaller parking lot. Like just so imagine they, those like details all over the place. They did, know? as far as I've heard, they did kind of do that where like the stadium is the stadium but it's much smaller or it's under construction mm. still yeah. and then okay. like the the as i saw like a screenshot of the new map and i think the airport is still there 
I have no idea about like the train station. I, I, know, I know they said they worked on a bunch of the interiors and like redid a bunch of interiors. So maybe yeah, I know it's not a it's maybe. not a dam anymore. There's like a reservoir instead. Like oh, it's before it's the, they built oh. like the big dam. Karen's literally oh. playing it right now. But wait, so wait was... a minute. I'm sorry, but but reservoirs kind of come from dams. Like before dams, it's just a river. I think it's like an I, offset sort of reservoir instead of like actually damming up the river. You they know, just like really yeah. funneling they it. Don't, they don't want anyone to swim in the game. Yeah, there's no swimming. They don't want anyone oh, to touch no water swimming. at all. Yeah. yeah. I guess I, I never have, realized that. Yeah. It's because uh, in, in canon, all the characters have just eaten. So you're supposed to wait up to 20 minutes. And those games don't really last that long. That's when each match yet. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I mean I you legally, you can't even swim. Yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm not I'm not fundamentally opposed to the idea of doing the same map, but 34 years earlier. I just think because like when you see like pictures of your town from 30 years earlier and you're like, whoa, it's actually pretty different. Like there's only 20 percent of the buildings like you could do it well. It just doesn't sound like they've done it well. So yeah, I do think I, they did uh, it pretty well. From what I've I will I will hold judgment Sorry. until I've actually played it. But um, yeah, uh, so Warzone I'll get Karen right in here. <laughs> and while I was waiting, yeah, please do go go grab her. Um, while I was waiting for the menu to load, which it never did, I played two rounds of Apex Legends, which I haven't touched in like three years or two years, however long it's been out. And I won the first match, <laughs> so I felt oh, pretty really? good. Yeah, it was. I I think yeah. it was like they they put me. I was me, my brother, and my friend were in a team of trios, and I think because I was there in like a level three, they like dumbed everyone down. So. Oh, gotcha. Because but, I, I was curious. Was, I was, yeah, I was going to ask you because I I don't know if I I don't think this was on local chat. I think this was differently, different stream going off on tangents here. I'm going back to the main thread here. Ooh. I I saw a TikTok actually of a clip of a pro shooter, pro gamer. Who plays FPS games, not a pro shooter. Um, and anyways, he played a bunch of Warzone and he went back to Apex Legends and he was crap at it. And he was like, this game is so much more difficult than Warzone because of the mobility, because of the distance of shooting is much longer than Warzone. I'm just curious if you if you agree with that or not, or what your thoughts are on difficulty between Warzone and uh, Apex. Honestly, the difficulty for me came more from the inventory system and the the learning like okay you can kind of upgrade your weapons um there's yeah. different like levels of upgrades and different levels of uh shields and and it was like it was like di disparate parts of warzone that had been expanded upon and i kind of liked it but again i only played like two rounds and the the shooting actually felt easier it felt like the the hit scan on a lot of the guns was like it was just it was just easier to hit people from really far away even with like an smg mm -hmm. or an lmg or something so mm -hmm. i didn't think that it was more difficult but i also again do think that they put me in a lobby with a bunch of players who were you know less than great yeah yeah because because i i'm just try, kind of trying to pit them against each other a little bit because it feels like those are the two dominant battle royales in the market right now oh, yeah P P PUBG's mostly relegated to to an asian market now but yeah. worldwide it feels like it's apex v warzone yeah i i I think I will always prefer Warzone just because I'm so much more used to it than I am Apex. But mm -hmm. the two rounds that I did play of Apex today, they they did feel fresh and it did feel kind of fun. I love the fact that the sliding mechanic and some of the running, jumping mechanics just feel so much like Titanfall. Um, obviously, there's no like wall running, but uh, yeah. I love the fluidity of that and the and the mobility that you have as a player, as opposed to Warzone where it's like. You, I mean, you, I, I didn't get stuck on any geometry in Apex, and I constantly get stuck on s the stupidest crap oh, yeah. in Warzone. So, but yeah, plus plus no fall damage. It felt like an Apex. Oh you my gosh! Just, yes, you could just bail out anywhere, anytime you needed yeah. to. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was that's great. So yeah, Apex, and then a couple other ones. Uh, Splinter Cell KS3, obviously, me and Will working our way through that. Great stuff. Uh, Halo Four, which I just started my Wednesday night streams with my friend Jimmy. We're going to be playing all the way through that. I played it once in college, remember vague parts of it. And actually so far we're playing it. It's not bad. It's, I mean, it feels very, it feels obviously different than, than Bungie's Halo, but yeah. some of the, some of the gun animations, the, the punchiness of everything, it's on like a different sort of not level, but like a different plane of existence from like, mm -hmm. I, it, it's just very different. And that I think to me makes it interesting. The story 
I, I don't really care about the story because it's it just from four. I think the story of Halo just has devolved into yeah. craziness yeah. and and not goodness. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then uh, also uh, beat Half Life Alex, which I absolutely adored, even though. My buddy's Oculus that he was letting me borrow was freaking out half the time, um, which I can't blame Alex for. That's that's just, you know, a first gen VR product. And Batman Arkham Asylum. I wanted to try playing the the Arkham Asylum games again because I <laughs> loved playing them growing up and I, I love the first one. Does he do does he do that 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 Batman that's no, not it's, Batman? It's voice? Kevin Conroy. No, it's Conroy. Kevin Conroy. Yeah. Okay, that's it's the good Batman that's voice. Conroy. It's the good Batman. <laughs> There's so many bad ones. Man, speaking of Batman, I've been watching that animated series. I'm on episode like 50 something now. Oh, it's so good. It's just so good. It's on uh, HBO, right? Yeah, HBO Max. Oh, it's so good. Speaking uh, of our sponsor for this week. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. We each got an HBO bow that we get to kill yeah. each other with. Um, <clears throat> that's great. Um, shut up, Ian. I'm going to kill you with the bow. Um, <laughs> speaking of killing you, what have you been playing? Um, I've been playing Monster Train. Uh, have you guys heard of Monster Train? Uh, I've heard of it because I see it in Discord. It says Ian Gibson play Monster Train. I have. I've not. I'm. I'm completely blind on this. Wait a minute. Does it really say playing Monster Train in Discord? Yep. You play it a guys, lot, <laughs> guys. I play that on Xbox. I know. That's crazy that that works. I mean, I kind of knew that it worked, but that's still crazy that that works. The Xbox hmm. app. I discovered when I play World of Warcraft, it tells my Xbox mm. friends I'm playing World of Warcraft on the Xbox. Yeah, I mean, I know I I know I linked my Microsoft and my. Okay, I was uh, gonna say I was like, can't you point. can't you do that? Yeah, yeah, you can. But I'm just surprised that it's like pulling your Xbox game and showing. Anyways, um, Monster Train. It's a Game Pass game. Uh, I believe it came out of a year and a half, two years ago. Um, when it came out, people were like, "Hey, this is like Slay the Spire," um, which is a fantastic uh, card building roguelike game um monster train it's very similar it is a roguelike run based randomized deck building game so you mm. you pick kind of your your two factions that you want to go with you get random cards from those factions you're you're basically on a train <gasps> heading to hell it's That's uh cool. story's kind of story's kind of weird but good but they don't really flesh it out because it's a roguelike but basically hell has been conquered by heaven and all the demons are in heaven now but they stage a jailbreak and they take the last pyre which is like the last piece of hellfire and they put it in a train and they're literally just driving a train from heaven through the seven rings of hell to get to the center <laughs> of it to, to put the last hellfire in and take hell back so you're just on this train and you're literally going through this run and there's only eight fights but in between the fights you have upgrades and the way it works is it's, it's almost like a tower defense in a way where there's like a your train has three levels to it, so each fight, enemies come in the bottom level. They fight. At the end of each round, they move up a level, and then at the top is your health bar. So it's actually kind of cool. It's like you could do, you could take 99% of a guy's health away that first round when he's on a level, but it doesn't matter. If he's still alive, he'll move on to the next level. Um, so it's it, it does a really good job of each fight it has like a certain number of turns, basically. And then because there's a limited number of boss fights, I think it's seven or eight fights total in a run. It means that if you make it all the way through, your run's going to last 45, 50 minutes tops, which is great. Hmm. Um, it just, it's just, you know, it's a deck builder and it doesn't necessarily do anything crazy hmm. other than kind of that turn round based mechanic I said, but those games like live or die on how good are the combos, how good are the different mechanics, how, how, well uh how well explained are the different buffs and debuffs you yeah. know what's sap what is uh, attack strength what is spikes what is poison what is frostbite etc and they do it really really well and so it's easy to just pick it up and play a game and i've just been playing that a lot this past week it's if you like slay the spire actually you know what, just play the game period just give it a shot but especially if you're into run based or if you're into deck building or anything like that it's just it's a lot of fun. It's on Game Pass. Highly recommend it. Y'all should check it out. Awesome. Um, yeah, great enthusiasm there. Um, it sounds amazing. And awesome. I ask myself those questions every day. What is that? It's really good. It's every also day. only like a gigabyte to download. So just download and try Oh, it. wow. Wow. Yippee. I'm going to choke you. 
Uh, so Prey is the other game I've been playing. Which I've one? only played about an hour of it so far. The uh, original, because it's better. No, I'm just kidding. I'm oh. playing the latest one. Uh, you could, Jay, I own Jay the Cop original. Real quick. ZeniMax is a very, very stupid company, and I can't believe they wasted the Prey name on this game. Nothing against this game, but it's not Prey. Like, the original Prey had great great mechanics in it. Remember like the whole like dimension building and the gravity warping and the whole like Native American storyline that was going on. And me like a biker in that game or, or yeah. just like started a you bar or something. Yeah, you start in a bar. Yeah. yeah. And it was just like now they can't do a prey to because the whole name is muddied by this completely separate sci-fi franchise that doesn't need the name. And to be clear, they both have the same parent company. And that parent company was trying to have another Prey game. So they just decided at some point, they're like, hey, guess what? Your game is now called Prey. So it's just like, it's just so stupid. But anyways. I, was that rumor? I don't know if you know this, but wasn't it rumored that it was because they were going to lose the copyright for the name? Oh, they just I remember hearing something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It still it doesn't justify it in my no, book, look, but. Look, uh -oh. it didn't start as Prey. I can tell you that much. <gasps> um, but let me put it this way. I've only played the first hour of it. It's a good game. I think it's got a really good opening. I'm just not sure if I'm in the mood for one of those games where you go into an area and you're like, okay, I need to look at every single corner. I need to look at every single item. I need to pick it up. I'm just not sure I'm in that mood was, right now. It was me with Half-Life Alex. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it another hour or two, give it a solid shot. But I think if I'm going to stop playing it, it's not going to be the game's fault. It's just going to be because I don't want to run around picking up a bunch of stuff. Yeah. yeah it's it just sense. like... Like, let me just, let me just, I want a linear experience right now. And that's, that's not that game. Yeah, but yeah, Mer that's. Mercer Sims can be a lot sometimes. Yeah. And I think a lot of it is like, there are a lot of ways to do things wrong. Like, for example, Red Dead Redemption 2, which is not really an immersive sim, but having it take a second or two to pick up a single item, <laughs> it's just like, it's god awful. So at least this game doesn't do that. But having 30 things and making it, feel like you're kind of obligated to interact with all those different things in a room is just like I mean just slow the game down to a crawl <laughs> um yeah so yeah I'm, I'm giving it a shot I'm liking it so far I'm just not sure I'm right in, in the right headspace for it nice awesome um, all right on to the news for me uh first bit of news that someone removed I got a brand new spanking new chair and it's great and I love it and it it's better than my old chair, and it's good to have good back support. So, folks, always buy a good chair. Uh, number two, The Elder Scrolls Oblivion uh, came to Game Pass, which doesn't matter because I already owned it and all the DLC. Uh, so I started playing that again because it's one of my favorite RPGs. Uh, I'm like eight or nine hours in, uh, just hanging out, having fun, listening to Sean Bean say things to me very confusedly. And then just I uh, like went back when I played it as a child, um, I ma mostly just did the main quest and like arena stuff. So there's a lot of like I always thought it was kind of a boring game that didn't have much in it uh, other than like the cool main quests and stuff I liked. But now playing through it, like it has a lot of that early Morrowind stuff where like someone will say something and then you go talk to them, and they, like, vaguely mention something, and you walk over to what they mentioned, and then there's a thing happening, and they give you a quest. Oh. So, it, yeah, that's I never thought Oblivion had that, which is weird, because I played a lot of Morrowind, which did have that. Um, so, it's cool to go back and discover that, that like, there's so much uh, stuff like that. The one thing that someone pointed out to me, some YouTube video, is that in Oblivion, every single character, no matter when you talk to them like 90% of the time introduces themselves and the name of their business in the first paragraph, no matter how many times you talk to them. So they're like, I'm Grub Mac, owner of good killings. And like every time you talk to them, it's like, oh, no. now I, I just notice it that every single character, like a beggar will be like, hi, my name's this and I'm a beggar. And like every time, I'm like, I did, <laughs> did they do this on purpose? I mean, clearly, but it's, it, it's starting to get to me. Um, wow. Other than uh, also Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, been playing with Kyle. That's fun. Hey, real and quick, how is that game? I think we all know that I don't watch our own content. So how's that going? How's the game? It's, it's... you go. Okay, <laughs> it's I dramatic. We both pause. started to think, and then we 
couldn't think of anything to say. No, um, I, it's fun. I mean, it's very dated, and and the fact wow. that you need to press a button to do everything is is like some of the stuff should happen automatically. I feel like, but yeah. like yeah. you have to you have to. You have to press a button to crawl into a uh, crawl space, and you have to press a button to get out of the crawl space, rather than just holding forward or back. Yeah, um, just yeah. little little stuff like that is is annoying, but it's fun. I mean, it's it's actually yeah. really difficult um, because I I feel like the guards. I mean, there's always guards in every single uh, level, but they're they're like hypersensitive. They have like super hearing, mm -hmm. and uh, it's still fun though. I mean, there and there's a lot of you know, me and Will just sort of screwing around and killing each other sometimes. And, and that's always yeah. fun. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, I'm having a good enough time with it that I think I would want to play just the campaign. Like I would go yeah. and play that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it, it's pretty fun. It's not bad. And it is the campaign, is the campaign different from the co op? Yes. Yeah. We're playing co op oh, specific cool. missions. That's so, cool. I like. That. Um, I just had our Warzone correspondent, but now she's left, so I don't know if she's coming back. Uh, I heard her. She she texted me. She said it's bad. Oh, perfect, perfect. She um, said everything I said was correct. Yeah. Oh, you're no, never mind. I can make that joke. Um, I have. I also started playing Pathway, which is on the PC Game Pass. I don't know if it's on Xbox Game Pass. What it is, is that? a, uh, pixel almost like XCOM turn based moving shooter okay. game uh it's very much my aesthetic which is like 1920s 30s adventurer indiana jones sort of thing um i played it for about an hour i, I wasn't that into it. it it seemed a little over complicated for what it was it was trying to combine uh you go off on these adventures uh and it combines each adventure is like a mini campaign but you're it's roguelike so, like, once you die in the campaign, you can just start it over again. Um, and then you have this map where you drive from location to location. One location might be, like, a Bedouin tent city that you, like, go and trade. The next one could be a German outpost. The next one, it's just a bunch of random stuff. Um, but I just didn't find the combat that exciting or um, the, like, the, the story was okay, but it, it kind of seemed lacking for what it was. So... I have my fill of like really good mechanical roguelikes. So mm -hmm. I just didn't want to deal with that. So I kind of put it down, but it has really good aesthetics. So I would definitely check it out if you're into that sort of thing. Um, but it wasn't quite my cup of tea. Uh, and then finally uh, on the 19th at 11 PM Eastern horizon zero dawn complete edition became free uh, for, I don't know if it's for PlayStation five owners or PlayStation plus ps5 owners um it might just be free to all people who have a playstation 5 I, if someone wants to look the play at home thing for them for sony um started playing that i i have enjoyed it more than i thought i would um and it looks better than i thought it would uh the only problem is i'm getting i don't know if this is an original game issue or a ps5 thing but i get a lot of like pop in when i feel like it shouldn't be there or that like, like the original game. yeah so there's like a lot of pop in. there's a lot of like all of a sudden characters will just all reset yeah. like in the middle of cutscenes and everything or like in the middle of talking which it doesn't bother me that much but it's just like all of a sudden happens you're like oh um yeah. that the... was one of the reasons why i i stopped playing the game like seven or eight hours in was a lot of little stuff like that started building up and i was like all right i'm done yeah i'm gonna put this down the combat i find really engaging and fun it you just go in a bush, whistle a guy over, kill him, and like kind of sneak around and shoot people. I will say, you, you had said earlier that it wasn't one big open map, which it is one big open map. Yeah, um, I think it's, I think I, I've, okay, part of that is me because I, I got to the main, the first big area with the first Brontosaurus, Tall Mac, whatever. Yeah. And I didn't go past that. But the second part is I talked to Jake and he, told me that all the areas were like that that they were all hemmed in like that and you were going from area to area to area yeah but so. uh, yeah i guess that is sort of true but it is one big map you are walking through the whole map you're not like yeah, loading into different areas they're just like very uh, yeah. specific like sectioned biomes basically yeah um, gotcha okay and I, I i was the same way well because because like I think when it first came out on PC, which is the only uh, way that I've played it, I don't own a PlayStation, 
Um, and the PC release was rough. And this was coming after Death Stranding come out, which is like one of the greatest PC ports ever made. And uh, just just in, per, in terms of performance, I love Death Stranding. I um, love Death Stranding. So I was expecting like a similar sort of thing. I was like, oh, this is going to be great. It's a Sony exclusive coming to PC. It'll be great. And I remember, I mean, there was so much stuttering um, pop-ins, especially if it's a cinematic, uh, like uh, a conversation, like a dialogue piece, it would flip back and forth and people in the scene would just pop in. Like yeah. there'd be, and yeah. it was like very clear that that it was doing like a uh, backend rendering of, of the scene when it wasn't on screen. Yeah. And it, was, it was very strange. I know they patched a bunch of it, but I haven't played it since. And I'm sort of like you, Ian, I got, I got to, I think like eight hours, maybe seven, seven or eight hours. And I got to like the, the high plains kind of area where uh, it's sort of like desert Sedona kind of area. Mm -hmm. And um, which I guess is not the high plains. And I just stopped. I, I, the enemies became way too difficult for me to kill. It was like, it was like, I understood the combat loop for the first like three hours. And I was like, okay, I can get by doing this. I know I have to hit specific enemies with specific areas and specific parts. And then they just keep introducing more enemies. And I felt like I wasn't effective in the combat. Like it felt like mm -hmm. I was just loosing arrow after arrow to you know, some of the, whatever the like saber tooth tiger sort of yeah. thing is that big yeah. like slinky one. And I was like, why am I not like, I literally spent 10 minutes shooting arrows at this guy, different types of arrows. Like I went around my little click wheel and was like, okay, let's try this one. Let's try this one. And it felt like I wasn't doing any damage and i looked up videos on youtube and i think it just doesn't it's just not for me it's just yeah it just I, doesn't fit my i feel like play style that combat i want like i enjoy the combat with the humans and with like the one shot things and all that sort of stuff but i i want the bigger guys to be more like monster hunter where like i know there's yeah. a weak point or i know there's like yeah. this will do this because like i did some of the trap stuff but even like you do the click in to like highlight their weak points but as soon as you leave that yeah. menu it doesn't show them anymore yeah and, it's and like, i want to well, like I, I, yeah, yeah i want to highlight it so i know it's there and i can shoot them with an arrow and then yeah it's, it's it's weird combat like i feel like like you said i feel like i have it figured out but i know something's gonna toss it so i'm at least intrigued enough in the story to keep playing it for a little mm -hmm. bit i think i'm f i'm bordering on five hours in i think my last save was four and a half hours so I'll at least keep playing while I'm thinking about it. Um, but yeah, it's it's mostly the story that's keeping me going. Um, yeah, but Horizon so Zero Dawn. I did. I did look it up. It is one of their free for PS4 and PS5. Don't need any subscription at all. It is just oh really? Free. You can claim it. Cool. That's yeah. great. I think they did that recently with Abzu and some other games as yeah. well. Yeah, I knew they were all on there. I just wasn't sure if it was if you had to be a PlayStation Plus member. But that's awesome. No, it's it's one of their like backhanded responses to Game Pass, where yeah. they're like not quite matching it, but they're they're trying, you know. Uh, well, if that's gonna be it for what we have been playing, that means we can dive into the news. And we have I actually recorded finally recorded the new news theme that Zach sang live last week. Uh, so I I got another copy of it, so we can uh, just play that here, and then we'll dive into the news. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? Ah, oh, so good. Dulcet there tones. Go. Um, there's a lot of news this week, which means one thing: things have been happening. Uh, I wanted to talk about something first and foremost that I'm very excited about, and that is the Nintendo and Fuji Film team up for a Game Boy esque printer for Switch. I only want to talk about this because instant cameras are really cool to my brain. Um, and the Game Boy printer, I think, is extremely cool. Oh, yeah. um, and this is a deal between Fujifilm and Switch. You uh, send your pictures uh, from the Switch to the phone app, which then gets printed out on this little in is it Instax? Is that what their brand is? Instax mini link. So it's like this little box that prints out uh, things. And they're showing examples of, obviously there's a new Pokemon Snap coming out. 
There is uh, Animal Crossing you take screenshots. There's Mario. So I think any of your screenshots get printed out. I don't know. I assume the cropping takes place in your phone app um, and not yeah. in the main oh my game. Gosh, there's a, a Pikachu silicone case. Yeah. yeah. It, it is a little weird. I think it's you have to pull the photos from your Switch to your phone and then use the phone app to print yeah. to the printer. Yeah. Select yeah, the screenshot little, little, and album. Yeah. Scan QR code with your phone. And launch it's never app. easy. It's never ever easy with Nintendo. <laughs> There's like 15 steps here. I know. Um, I just think the this is cool because I mean, I guess you could try to do it through USB, or you could try to do like Wi-Fi Connect. I, I it's, yeah. it's 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 a tough it's a tough situation. I, I think the technology is cool. The way Nintendo implements things is never cool. Uh, yeah. This led me to googling okay. instant cameras because I was like, I should buy an instant camera. They're uh, they're very expensive right now because there's like a big yeah. hipster resurgence. Um, I buy there's some cool one. there's some cool tech though. Like one of the main ones that people are buying now are basically just digital cameras with a printer attached to it. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of doing like a Polaroid or, or some other some other knockoff Polaroid type. So I um, it's, it's kind of weird. I bought, Wait, doesn't Karen have one? Yeah, I bought Karen a Polaroid when they first relaunched Polaroid stuff. And so she has a bunch of film for that. And that comes out pretty well. That comes out exactly the way you think those pictures would come out, which makes everything look like the 90s and perfect. 80s, 90s. So it's absolutely perfect. Um, yeah. But I, I want like a... They make some small form factor ones that I was like, oh, I could just keep it in my pocket. But uh, they're, they're expensive. Or you could just... Um... I've seen ones where it's it's a it doesn't print, but it's a digital camera and it's the size of a credit card. Oh, like the same thickness that, as well. I didn't I think Leica made one, which is probably like eight hundred thousand dollars. But I th yeah, I've make... I've seen a cheaper credit yeah. card one because it just runs off like a micro SD. Yeah, um, that's pretty cool. The other thing uh, is you could always just just do a disposable camera because those are still dirt cheap. And then yeah, but you get to throw them, you have to throw them away. You never get to see the pictures. Um. <laughs> Anyways, I just wanted to bring that up because I, I was afraid this news story would get lost. Um, I didn't even put it here. I think one of you bozos put it here. I did. Um, it's cool. It's neat. News. Oh, wow. Um, that's great. Anyways, uh, who wants to go next? Uh, I will jump in. <gasps> so, uh, Jason Schreier, the, the Schreister. Schreister. Um, <laughs> He uh, he mentioned on what a podcast or something like I don't know if it was Bloomberg or if he was guesting on another one, but um, As Aspire Media is potentially remaking Kotor and or Asper Media and Aspire, um, I think yeah yeah, yeah. and cool. one I'm a huge Kotor fan I I love both of them very dearly and two I actually have a really good history with aspire as well i have one interaction that i've had with them where uh, i think kotor was put on steam a couple years ago like three four years ago or whatever it was and they had an offer out that no one knew about and i actually ended up emailing them about it because i thought I, I heard where if you had the physical like five disc copy of kotor or kotor 2 whatever the installation pack was if you took a picture of all the discs, they would send you a Steam download code. And I did that. Oh. And they they did it. They they gave me a code. And I was like, this company's awesome. Uh, since looking into them after that, they've done a few ports. And they've been shoddy to really bad. Uh, yeah. So I don't know if I have much hope for an actual KOTOR remake. Now, if it's like a remaster with just higher textures and stuff like that, maybe. But uh, I, don't, I don't know if their track record is super great as far as remaking or, or or porting games yeah but yeah because this, this is interesting because this is uh according to the article it is a remake yeah so they're they're gonna have to put some heavy lifting in there and uh, i mean uh, kyle like you said they recently did stubs the zombie on switch uh as well as star wars republic commando on switch those are their two games from 2021 released recently i've heard both of those don't run great on the switch which is crazy because those games are old and they should run fine on the Switch. Very old. I think they also did uh, the ports of Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy, and Jedi Knight, Jedi Outcast. Yes. Which are playable, but it's way more difficult to play them on the Switch just because it's like they didn't nail down the sensitivity of just the camera controls. 
and it makes oh. it's it's better it's best when you have a lightsaber but for jedi knight jedi academy you play the first third of the game without one so it's like yeah. it's a very unwieldy early 2000s shooter and it's just it's not great and unless, unless you have a mouse and keyboard can you do a mouse keyboard into a switch is that a thing? Probably. Actually, think, it's probably I think, a yeah. thing. I think they're very open to what controllers you can because you can use you can use a, a PS4 controller on the Switch. Okay. Well, uh, I'll have to I'll have to load up uh, yeah. uh, Jedi Knight and see what happens if I use my keyboard and mouse. But yeah, it's it's playable. It it was a good port as far as quality and everything was there. It never crashed. It worked well. It was just the controls were were wildly uneven. Yeah. I'm just I'm, I'm making faces over here because I'm looking at um, Aspire's previous ports, mm. and apparently Call of Duty Modern Warfare Two and Three came out on Mac because that's what Ooh. they ported. Um, I, as well as Knights of the Old Republic Two came out on Linux in 2015. Interesting. They do a lot of Linux Mac ports, which is crazy because I I didn't know Mafia Three came out on the Mac. That's 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 weird, but that's they've been weird. doing those ports. Uh, I did want to clarify with the Switch thing. That printer is a phone printer that already exists. The new thing they're adding is a specific Switch app to print to that printer that already exists. Wait, so Are technically you... you could already do... You yeah. could so, download a screenshot, send it to your phone. Yes, 100%. And do it that way? Okay. <laughs> yeah, because you, you, you can already use your phone to grab to print. screenshots off your Switch. Yeah, yeah and you can. Uh, this printer has its own... Fujifilm app that you can print your iPhone photos out. Yeah. Which seems so like an extra step. Yeah, they're just releasing Nintendo themed accessories and an app to yeah. make it to give like the, the same, borders and frames. That makes me yeah. way less excited for it for some reason. Yeah. Yes, yeah, stupid. Take it back. Stupid. I hate it. I canceled it. Now, uh, if they had a, a portable dot matrix printer. Oh, baby. I'd the be sound of board. dot matrix That's printers crazy. printing and then the rip. Oh, gets me every time. God, I need to leave. <laughs> uh, speaking of leaving, Ian, uh, do you want to talk about anyone leaving any major companies? <laughs> yeah, we need to talk about the leak of unannounced Metal Gear Solid <laughs> board game. I'm not taking your bait, baby boy. <laughs> um, so this this is crazy because um, the creators of Spectre Ops, which was a, a well-regarded tactical espionage board game, was originally planning to make a Metal Gear Solid board game, but then it was canceled. But now there is leaked artwork for uh, Metal Gear Solid Psycho Mantis Battle. It was found on a website for a company called Art Potions, co-founded by some illustrators in the board game industry. So there may be a Metal Gear Solid board game coming. Um, I know you will be buying this most likely will right yes and we will be playing it but quite frankly i don't think those statements are any indication of our expected quality of the game Metal so gear. i need i need to hear more about who designed this and i need to hear more about it's actually great that games do this now where typically when they announce a board game or when it first goes up on kickstarter they also release the rule book so you can be like hey before you buy this game read the rule book and you'll get an idea of the mechanics and if you're actually going to like this um so i'm curious to, to kind of know what this is what this is going to play like but i'm excited for it yeah i was i was sad because i was reading this article and they had mentioned that the this was off the hot tales of uh metal gear solid the board game was canceled in december 2020 um and mm -hmm. that was by emmerich matsuchi who uh made the oh it said it here he made the century games um, and mm. so he was working on that, but apparently it was canceled, but then the story ends with Masuchi has not confirmed potential release dates for Metal Gear Solid, the board game. So I think they're taking cancel with a grain of salt here where it means they got canceled enough to get the, it was just delayed. It wasn't canceled. So yeah. Or uh, reworked different creator. Yeah, different so designer. definitely we want to get that if it ever comes out and definitely want to get the psycho mantis battle. If that ever comes out um, and we will play it live on stream. Yes, we will play it live on stream. Uh, moving on. I, what did I want to talk about? Um, oh, I want to talk about the apex legends mobile. Uh, this only caught my attention because I know. What do you? What do you? Who cares? Let's be honest. This isn't for us. Mobile games 
especially mobile shooters are huge in Asia. As PUBG is huge over there. Call of Duty Mobile is huge over there. This just ain't for us. So we're not going to enjoy it. We don't really play mobile games. We're definitely not playing FPS on mobile. I'm not. I'm not playing it. I don't care. Put that. Put that. Wow. Put that cash bin. Wow. I'm, I'm sassy tonight. Get rid of it. Apparently, I'm looking forward to this because I think it'll be a fun way Shut to play up. Apex Legends. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I know several people who play Call of Duty Mobile, and I know several people who play PUBG Mobile, uh, and nope. used to play Fortnite Mobile, but they're it's not an iPhone anymore. Um. So I think that'd be cool to see how they pack this thing up for mobile. Uh, if it's anything like the Switch version, terribly. Um, I definitely want to check it out. I'll download it and uh, test it out because it could be cool and I could dominate. I know this, this is probably going to be a completely separate engine. But if it's not, that means they put the Source engine on phones. Because Apex Legends runs on the Source engine. Well, yeah, I, I made that leap. Uh, so that's exciting. I'm looking forward to that. They also announced some other Apex uh, Legends stuff today. There's that um, new, new uh, hero hero they announced, new, but they Legends. literally just op- announced something today. And of course, I exited the uh, exited the thing, so I have no idea what it was. Anyways, uh, Kyle, you're up, sweet, sweet boy. Uh, this is just a more of a thing we can make fun of. Amazon canceled yet another game. Uh, and I just looked into it. Amazon Studios has produced 13 games. Five of them have been canceled thus far. That is 38%, guys. 38% of the games that they've made have been canceled. That's crazy. I did my math right. Uh, crazy. there's already a good Lord of the Rings MMO. It's Lord of the Rings Online. Actually not everybody half should, bad. Everybody should and play... The Lord of yes. the Rings Return of the King EA game, which is amazing. Challenge everything. So, so good. Challenge everything. Uh, the That's day it. I learned I was good at video games was the day my older brother and his friend asked me to beat a section of the Twin Towers video game for them because Ooh. they knew I could do it. <laughs> Take that, Zach. Great. You suck. Also, this is a complete side note. Isn't there a Gollum video game coming out? Yes. Yes, they have shown a couple why? of minutes. Of Which doesn't sound are, good at all. I was just gonna say, why are people excited for that? I don't want to play Gollum. I have I have no interest in playing as Gollum. I'm like, gonna say none. I don't have interest, but from what they've shown, it looks like it is a very solid stealth game. Which is like, yeah, you're doing it right. Better than Gollum the action game. It's like, no, you're just you're stealthing through these mines. And it's if you want a good Gollum romantic comedy game, is what I want. Ooh, Jackbox, Gollum Jackbox. If you want a good Gollum stealth game, just mod Gollum into Metal Gear Solid 5 and then play that. That's a good stealth game. That's a terribly good idea. (laughs) It is. It's tempting. Uh, Ian, hit me with your sweet, sweet news. Yeah. uh, Speaking of PlayStation and their efforts to rebut Game Pass, uh, Sony today confirming that they are launching PlayStation Plus Video Pass in Poland. Um, so this gives PS4 and PS5 users in Poland access to over 20 movies and television shows from Sony Pictures as part of their PlayStation Plus subscriptions with more content being added every three months. Wow. Okay. Do better, Sony. Come on. <laughs> Like, you literally just know what we want. Just literally do King Pass, and you can't even do that. Also, someone said the wording doesn't say streaming. It, like, implies downloading it to watch things. Which, I mean, as a consumer, I would love that, because then I don't have to worry about buffering or compression or anything like that. As a company, that would be a nightmare, an anti-piracy nightmare. Yes. So. Um... Yeah, that sounds like an attempt at nothing. Like, but I can already do all that stuff on Sony anyways, right? No, you can't. Because August 31st, 2021, they will no longer have a digital storefront for movies and TV shows on PlayStation consoles. Yeah, but I can put Netflix on it. Yes, you could do that. Yes. So this is a weird thing where they are killing their, you know, rent or buy a movie from Sony to play on your PlayStation 
but then they're pseudo replacing it with this weird offering, but it's in a really weird beta right now. And it's yeah. literally 20 movies and TV shows. It's nothing. Listen, I can put it's... my Plex server on there and watch whatever I want from the oh, internet ugh. for free. Yeah. So shut it. So, just another, um, just really weak volley in the ongoing <laughs> digital gaming how is, cloud service. How is Jim Ryan not like, uh, I watch people play old video games and I don't know why they enjoy those. It's like when I watch people watch old movies. Why would they enjoy old movies? Nobody likes Nobody likes people. old movies. Stupid. He's not good. Idiot. I just said Winston Churchill. Wow. Um, I did just want to mention that Apex News that I had seen today. There's uh, teases at a new arena mode in the game, which uh, there's a gameplay reveal on Monday. So we'll talk about that next week. Um, Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That just sounds like Deathmatch or Team Deathmatch. That's what I, I think. I think they're, the, the rumor on like the, the main thing is they're just adding like regular multiplayer modes to Apex Legends. I'm not, like that is news, but at the same time, it's weird to be like, guys, our Battle Royale game is now going to have traditional multiplayer <laughs> modes. And it's I mean, like, that's pretty I cool. Actually, I, I would actually play know Apex a more. People who were like more interested in it now that they've heard that. Just, I think just yeah. having having the variety to or the, the ability to choose is, you know. Yeah. Like if, if Warzone if had regular team deathmatch and stuff, I'd probably play it a lot more. Like they're they're just doing the opposite of what Call of Duty did. Like Call of Duty was traditionally, you know, yeah. multiplayer centric, and then they were like, "Hey, we're doing battle royale too." And now Warzone's a huge thing, and now Apex yeah. is like, "We were gonna do the opposite because we started out as battle royale, and we can't do anything yeah. original." Um, I, I agree. It's it's a good thing. It's just it's kind of weird because a couple years ago the announcement would have been reversed, which is our traditional multiplayer game now has battle royale and now it's like well, well we got to backpedal a little bit we got to ba battle royale is not that great anymore it's not that hot so we gotta the hot new thing is traditional so it's it's just a little weird yeah um okay fine since no one else wants to talk about the big news i guess i'll talk about it the S htc vibe error yeah i mean i was really excited for that when they announced uh the the concept got leaked god that's very funny but what people want to hear about is that Steam will no longer crash. You have more than 25,000 games, guys. <laughs> Don't uh, worry. That's, that's up there with one of the craziest, like, like no, bug notes in, in, a, in a release. Um, <laughs> yeah, it may sound crazy because it is crazy, but uh, I saw a lot of people pointing out most the people with the ludicrous amounts of games is uh, there were a few Steam sales early on that actually not even that early on i think it was the mid teens that one of the prizes you could win was all games on steam um and i don't know if that keeps adding them but there's like i think there's like i can't the article said that 50 people there's gotta be there's gotta be a cutoff uh have those games have that so i think it was the all the games at that time but then well, this also can affect like media accounts and stuff like that that's what i was about to say yeah um um it's still crazy so yeah it's Absolutely. a funny little line um no but the real news that we should be talking about jeff kaplan leaving blizzard uh searching for lost shift key that's very funny it's very that's funny he wrote, wrote yeah. that yeah. i don't um, know if you guys saw his release but the press release was like kaplan's leaving here's a statement from him and then it was him using paragraphs using punctuation <laughs> but refusing to capitalize the start of sentences it is yeah. i was just like what am i looking at is this your style bro because if so i'm glad you're leaving like <laughs> he's like that uh, out of here. he's like the row he's like cormac mccarthy who needs quotation marks yeah. <laughs> it's it's honestly like I didn't even have to read it. I just looked at it and it is visually insulting to look at a paragraph. Yeah, like it that. is. I'm looking at it right now. It's pretty rough. Um, it's, I will it's say it's quite a loss. I mean, think of any good Blizzard game over the past 30, 20 years, 19 years. He's been there 19 years and he has probably had a hand in it. He worked on WoW, worked on Overwatch, uh, was supposedly had good news about Overwatch 2 and then never got to say it. So. Who knows what's happening with Overwatch 2? I don't care for Overwatch. I know it's a good game, and I know I people I like it. it. it I don't so care funny. about it. I know Ian likes it. 
and he one talks day to it in one his day sleep. you're gonna like Overwatch, and you're gonna like Pokemon, and you're gonna like Tetris. It's gonna happen. I like Tetris. Just never, never played, played it. Tetris, so, <laughs> Pokemon is dumb and stupid. Pokemon is okay better right. than Overwatch, though. I'll say that much. Um, yeah, Actually, that's, that's the tough. big news. It's tough. Yeah, it's tough. Anyways, I don't want. I better don't want to get into that. Worse than Brink, though. Uh, I think. I think with this, I. You know, I you're right about this guy has a, has a great history with Blizzard, but I feel like this announcement says nothing. And, and let me just add some context to that. Reading this announcement and trying to interpret things about the state of Overwatch, the Overwatch League, or Overwatch Two is like reading tea leaves. I don't really think this says anything at all. Um, right. My gut feeling is that it has reached a point in development where he doesn't need to stick around anymore to see it out the door, and so he's ready to go. But it, he's fine with where it's at. This is not bad news. But again, that's just, that's just a gut feeling. This is, there's really, there's no way to tell what's going on at the company or with the overwatch. Yeah. Cause the people are professional. Uh, unlike yeah. people who aren't, um, you talking about me again. No, no, I just mean, there's a lot of people like who read into these things. We're like, if I lost my job at blizzard, I'd spill all their secrets. When in the professional world, you, you don't really do that a because yeah. there's ndas and b because people don't just burn Good bridges lawyers. for fun <laughs> yeah. um uh the other thing i was going to mention is a lot of people are thinking he might go to that uh i can't think of the new studio that was founded by a bunch of blizzard that people offshoot. yeah, yeah um, that's right yeah so who knows uh it'll be interesting i mean wherever he ends up i hope he keeps making games or does whatever he wants because it's his life but i hope he has fun um save data in the chat yes you missed what's up news uh i apologize um whose turn is it i don't know uh do you want to talk about the htc vive air kyle no um i i, I think the only thing <laughs> worth mentioning on this is that uh, no apparently i don't, <laughs> apparently I don't know new headsets. I, we're, we're kind of this weird vr podcast now where it's just like we love any vr news because it means that the space is expanding and competition tends to breed uh, better hardware, better games, cheaper entry point. And I think VR is good right now, but it's not great. It's not fantastic, but I, it's heading in that direction. Uh, Kyle, you've been, you've been hanging out in VR lately. Is that, is that kind of how you feel or you feel different? No. Um, I mean, it's, it's hard to like say what the current VR is because I've only been gaming on an original Oculus, which is not bad when it works. It's great. Um, but I, I've only ever played that in a PSVR, which was actually pretty cool, uh, for, for, for what it was back in the day. And yeah, I mean, stuff like seeing, seeing this new vibe stuff where it's more like fitness focused. And, um, I know they, they said it's just a concept, but I apparently won an award for, uh, what was it? Uh, the IF design award. So apparently it looks cool. Mm -hmm. It does. The picture kind of looks, it, it, I, I like the materials that they're using for it. Cause it just looks more comfortable than I mean, yeah. the Oculus is awful. Like it, it's so uncomfortable and you get really hot. This looks like breathable and, and it looks like they're, they're aiming their future designs towards, okay, we've got the technology working. Let's work on how it interfaces while you're wearing it and how, how it feels. Let's focus more on the actual gamer rather than the unit that they're using to game, uh, which yep. I think is great. And yeah, and cheaper entry points, always good. Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, awesome. <clears throat> Ian, any final? Uh, you want to do your hot, hot, uh, quick hits? Yeah, let's do some hot. Um, this is going to be a little, a little more than quick. Xbox Cloud Gaming on PC and iOS devices has entered limited beta. Um, we knew this was coming. It's just interesting that they got this working on uh, iPhones and iOS devices because Apple doesn't actually allow the Game Pass app. They do not allow you to do that streaming video game type of thing because they want their cut. But what they did was they made a Safari compatible web app. So essentially you load Game Pass through Safari browser and play that way, which is pretty neat that they have that workaround. Um, the other thing is with this, I looked it up. There is a game called MLB The Show 21. <laughs> it was previously only on PlayStation. It is now only on PlayStation and Xbox. But with this, it is now on cloud, which means you can play that. You can be a PC owner, not have a PlayStation, not have an Xbox, and play this game through Game Pass. That is just another barrier breaking down, which is actually real awesome. You could also play it in the browser on a PlayStation. Yes. Yes, you can. 
So it's um it's just it's just neat to see what are typically console exclusives that are now somewhat accessible to PC gamers. Yeah, that's really um, cool. Next up, PlayStation. Um, they did something good and realized how stupid they are. PS3 and PS Vita <laughs> stores will continue operations. I actually disagree with this. Just kill the store. You know what? Um, we're in a digital world. Anyways, uh, Square Enix joins Digital E3 officially, and they promised a quote-unquote announcement. <gasps> Kingdom Hearts is, is gay now. Kingdom <laughs> Hearts is, it is. Kingdom Hearts is Always has good been. now. <laughs> That's the, the announcement. <laughs> Announcement. God, I gotta hate. Oh, uh, now I want the astronaut meme where it's wait, Kingdom Hearts is yeah. gay. Always has <laughs> been. <laughs> so I'm not big enough of a Square Enix fan to like guess and or oh. care, but maybe the press conference will actually be good for once because I don't know that they've ever actually had a good E3 press conference. They've always just been kind of weird or middling. Mm. Unlike Anyways. Konami and their official great. Um, Monster Hunter World board game hits Kickstarter. Did I back it? No, it's way too expensive. It's like $70. Starting. What? And Sounds expensive cardboard. And then if you want like all the monsters, it's like $200 or something. Oof. It's a bit too much. That's too much. Um, what's like your threshold for like a, a board game that you, you would like to back? What would you be willing to pay? Oof. See, I have a different, uh, like, you the way you phrase it, because I have a different, thre like, it, threshold kind of for board crazy, game yeah. I know is good and want to buy. Sure, yeah, let's see Is, that. like, like 150. Bucks. Oh, okay, way more than um, that. Yeah, see, my, my threshold is much lower than that. My threshold's probably at, like, 80, but that being said, I did buy Twilight Imperium for the edition for $140. So, yeah. well, so in reality, I, my threshold's higher. But as far yeah. as kickstarting, it's much less, because I don't know if it's going to be yeah, a you don't There's know. always that uncertainty, um, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. I, I would say probably 100 bucks for a Kickstarter. It would ha I, the most I spent was, I think I spent... 80 bucks on the magic puzzles one which was three puzzles and they looked really well designed and stuff mm. so that was that was 80 bucks i think i spent on that but anyways yeah so monster hunter Bo world board game i'm not sure how i feel about this one the other one was their their release timeline was like hey it was weird they had it like fully fleshed out they had copies sent to like polygon and other stuff to get hands on and play it and then they were like we'll start shipping these in 21 months and it was like what <laughs> So the game's like ready and done, but they haven't actually started making it other than review copies. And it's just like, I, there's no point in backing it if it's going to be two years down the line. It's just yeah. wait for it, you know. Anyways, uh, next up, Discord stated they have the officially ended talks with Microsoft uh, about being acquired by Microsoft. Instead, they may potentially be eyeing an IPO. I think this is good news. As we talked about before, Microsoft tends to kill small things that they get, not out of malice, out of ignorance. Um... Actually, you know what? I want to dive into this just a little bit. Unconfirmed leak of Resident Evil 8 Sony marketing agreement. This is unconfirmed. It's basically somebody who has some uh, legal documents, uh, some uh, Twitter lawyers and actual lawyers like Hoag Law have taken a look at the document and basically said, this looks like a real document. I can't confirm that it's real, but it definitely looks like a real legal document. There's an interesting line in it where essentially they say uh, that during the period of the market, the co-marketing agreement for PlayStation exclusivity of like DLC and stuff, that uh, Resident Evil 8 cannot, it, the publisher cannot authorize, assist, or encourage any third party to include the game in any competitive platform subscription service that is competitive with any PlayStation subscription service, including, but not limited to, Google Stadia Pro, Microsoft's Xbox Live Gold, Project X Cloud, or Game Pass. So part of the marketing agreement with the game is essentially during the duration of this marketing agreement, which is typically a year, it can't go on Game Pass, can't go on all these other things. That's kind of curious. I mean, it's not shocking, but it's kind of interesting to see that behind the scenes. What do you guys think? Yeah, it's, it's neat to see like the inner work because there was also the uh, Monster Hunter World one that had leaked last week or earlier in the week that also had mm -hmm. similar phrasing and stuff that people extrapolated the wrong thing out of that which was they made the other versions worse and the sony version good which isn't what yeah. the documents were saying but it's neat to see that like nitty-gritty legal side of games and stuff that you don't often see yeah i, th I think it's i think it's pretty interesting i'm not surprised that it's in there but i think this is kind of a backdoor shot that sony is making at Game Pass, and honestly, this is right up there with one of their smartest decisions, along with the 
semi anemic if you buy a ps5 you get access to these like 20 ps4 games for free yeah um finally confirmed today from dice in a press release there is a new battlefield game coming in 2021 there are no details yet but they have said several things um sorry i'm on the wrong way that this game has everything we love about battlefield and takes all of it to the next level epic scale all-out military warfare, crazy unexpected moments, game-changing destruction. Okay, none of these are new. Um, Bad Company I, 3. I, I read that Warfare. entire sentence you just said as uh, yeah. Bill Hader from SNL doing uh, <laughs> whatever his... This battlefield has everything. New shit. Yeah. Like... <laughs> um, but they did say it will have more players, massive battles packed with more players and mayhem than ever. So I'm I'm curious... I've kind of fallen off the Battlefield series. I, I jump in every now and then, but Battlefield has always been about huge battles, and I'm curious. This is next-gen consoles and PCs only. This is going to be a next-gen game. I'm curious. What do you think their max player count is going to get to? Oof. 32? Um... <laughs> uh, I could see 100. I bet they would shoot for 100. But I Was could it, also... 150? At one point, one of the I games... think I think uh, this quick Google tells me Battlefield 5's maximum is 64. Okay. Um, I want to see at least 128. I've I think I've played 128 before on like Battlefield 2 private servers. Um, oh. and there are like the the Project Reality mod, which is based off of Battlefield 2 engine, goes up to 128. But oh, wow. I. I'd like to see more than that. If you're going big, let's do 256, baby. You know, aren't there some? What is what is Warzone, Kyle? Doesn't Warzone go above 100? It's 150. Um, yeah, this is saying Basil, Battlefield has usually operated with 532, or I don't know, Battlefield 2021. I think is saying it might be five teams of 32, like five squads of 32 in one match. Is what I'm reading That's on not for the new one. I think yeah. so. Yeah, that's. I, I, I could be mistaken, but on six. What do you think setting for this one? Modern. I want Mad Max. Oh, that'd be awesome! I, I want Vietnam. Honestly, oh yeah, I want either Vietnam or they should really do go back to Battlefield twenty one forty two. Oh yeah, twenty one. I forget the name of it. Anyways, that one. That one was incredible. That had the greatest multiplayer mode. It's too long for me to describe it, but it had Titans overhead, had you launching. It was like the it was the greatest multiplayer mode, and nobody else has done it since. Mm. It was incredible. Go back to the future. Go back I to that future. I want the Bad Company Two multiplayer was incredible, and the Bad Company Two Vietnam was incredible. I just want yep. Bad. I prefer Bad Company to. I prefer Bad Company multiplayer to Battlefield multiplayer because I like the sort of cartoonish everything blows up uh, more than I liked uh, the other stuff. I mean, I'd be fine with either, but oh, Bad Company was so great. Rush. Yeah, so I, I I keep trying Battlefield games. Like I played Battlefield 5 recently because it, I think it was on EA Pass. Um, it's part of Game Pass. And it, it like I I bought Battlefield 1942 when it came out. I'm I'm an original Battlefield fan, and they lost me along the way. Mm -hmm. Around three or four, they lost me. Um, and I, every time one comes out, I try it. I don't buy it launch, but I try it eventually, and they still don't have me. So I'm I'm eager, but boy, you got to do some work to get me back. Yeah, you know. That seemed to be what a lot of people were saying on uh, some of the Reddit threads in our games. They were like, "It just hasn't been the same since Battlefield Two or Battlefield 3. I've never played a Battlefield game. I've only seen it played, so it, it was just never my scene. But um, I always remember the trailer and the hype for Battlefield Three. Just the yeah. the. I, I mean, it's so stupid, but like as simple something as simple as the music, like pumping you up. I was like, holy crap! I want to play this game. This looks yeah. incredible. And um, I just I have not had an interest in that series since seeing those trailers. So. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe they'll pull something new out of uh, out of the hat, but we'll we'll have to see. I'm hoping for it. I don't think they will, but I'm hoping for it. You know, 
as are we all. Well, folks, that was the news for the week. Uh, exciting, exciting things, which means we're moving on to the next portion of the show where we add to the sub pixel rating system. Uh, we are going to pitch some games here and then we will, because it's a heavy news week, we'll pick one of them and then we'll add it to the list and figure out where it's going. Uh, the list as it stands, number one, Outer Wilds, number two, Yakuza 0, number three, Doom 1993, number four, Mass Effect 2 with the precursor clause of it being able to be moved if Ian Gibson beats the entire game in full, <laughs> number five, Prey 2017, number six, Shadow of the Colossus, number seven, Horizon Zero Dawn, number eight, Battlefield 1943, number nine, The Outer Worlds, number ten, Brink, and the worst game of all time, according to us, Cyberpunk 2077. Justly so. Um, next up, gentlemen, what do you have games to add? I, I have a proposal, which is proposal. we're probably we're probably just gonna have time for one game tonight. I mean, unless you guys are feeling more. That's what I said in the beginning. Okay. I'm fine so with I kind of like the idea of we all say what game and then we decide which game we think would be the better discussion. Okay, we're all gonna say it at the exact same time. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> On three. One, two, three. Daisy. Mirror's Edge, Daisy. Oh, and I said Halo 4. I think Mirror's Mm. Edge is too good to debate right now. What? I I want an easy game to put on here. Like, Daisy just goes below brink. (laughs) (laughs) Halo 4. Halo 4 is pretty good. It's uh, honestly, I mean, I'm already playing it, so we might as well talk about it. Yeah, um, uh, we can do Mirror's Edge. I don't mind doing. Did you say Mirror's Edge one or two? The first. I'm sorry, one. But first one. Now that I'm thinking about it. Let's just do all three because this is terrible <laughs> because I'm already thinking of all three. Let's just do it. Okay, what do you want to start with, Ian Gibson? Let's 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 start with let's start with mine since you picked me. Let's do Halo Four. Um, I I picked Halo Four because in my mind that is. We talked about this at the start of the podcast. That is the solid seven, which on our rating system is a five. I feel like that game has a lot of, has good stuff in it. It's solid as a shooter, but I don't really like the new race. I think they just kind of throw a whole bunch of stuff at you at the beginning. They don't really ease you into the new stuff. Yes. Story. We talked about the story, how it just, it just, just becomes kind of stupid. Um, So it just feels like it is solid middle of the pack. Now, that being said, our list is very top heavy. So I feel like it would go below Outer Worlds and above Brink. Uh, or not Outer Worlds. I would agree with below Outer Worlds. What do you think, Kyle? Yes, I, I would say below Outer Worlds as well. But, oh, but wow. definitely, definitely above Brink. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because yes. it does, it's, it's better multiplayer than Brink. And a campaign on top of it. But I don't yeah. think, as far as Halo games, I don't think its campaign, even with multiplayer, beats the storytelling and the creativity that Obsidian brought in with the Outer Worlds. Yeah. Plus, the other thing is, Outer Worlds, I feel like, is another like Solid 7 game. But what, what does it on top is that it did the, it did the Bethesda style of game that nobody other than obsidian has really done before yeah and they did it even more this time so so it was an established style but it's not like there were seven different studios doing that style they basically copied somebody else's style and did it better it's interesting that the bottom three games on the list currently are all ian's <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to balance the list out. literally we made this list to find the perfect five <laughs> to rebalance the rating scale and y'all are like i'm coming in with the greatest Uh-oh. game of all time over here Karen, are you here oh, no. yeah. can you talk about the new Warzone map quickly yeah. what's it like what's it like you can talk into the microphone. This oh. is a microphone. Go slap. Me. It's very cool. It's very 80s. Um, they made a few changes, like not a ton of structural changes, but it's like the stadium is still being built, so it's all very um, you know, it's like just the outside of it, and there's a lot of like the downtown mm-hmm. buildings that like aren't fully built and stuff. Um, are there are like the interiors of like buildings summit. changed? Um, are the interiors different? For some buildings, yes. Like like one of the downtown buildings was like you could see like they're painting the walls still, um, whereas like other like random little buildings and like houses not really. Um, is the dam there? 
Uh, the dam is there. We didn't go to it, so I don't know what it looks like. Oh. But there's like a little summit that's above it um, that I wanted to check out. I didn't get a chance to do it, though. Okay, so report back in next week. Okay. But do you like it so far? Yes. Do you I... think they put a year's worth of work into it? Into just that map? Yeah, supposedly they did. No. No? <laughs> okay. No, I mean, it's it's Denver. definitely because it's like... They had to redo the entire map, so I would guess maybe like six months tops. I don't that think seems I don't think a year is worth of work. I would say six <laughs> months at, at best. Folks, you but. heard it here. Our Warzone correspondent says six months at best, so buckle up. A, year, a year's worth of bad decisions. <laughs> a year's worth of bad decisions. Thank you very yes, thank I, you, though, Karen. I am very glad that they got rid of that um stupid uh um nuclear missile crisis announcement and like oh. ticker that would come up it's it so annoying come up in the middle of a match you'd have a ticker go in the middle of the match you'd have yeah. like loudspeakers oh. in your ears oh. it was so distracting oh. so ask her ask right. her real quick Wait. is the gulag different is the gulag different yes oh thank god i hate that gulag it's even more complicated oh, oh why am i like, saying her <laughs> It's it's almost like they're making it one of the multiplayer maps. I don't understand. It's like why no. do I need to play a multiplayer game in the middle of Warzone now? What in a Warzone fighting? Go back, <laughs> okay, go, go back, back to the bathroom. Gulag. Go back to your friends. I'm done. Playing. Oh, you're done? Yeah. Okay, we'll bed. go to bed. Right. Oh, Bye. Night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Karen. That was our Warzone car correspondent, Karen Spalding. Correspondent. I like that. <laughs> uh, that was great. God, I can't believe she plays video games. She's all grown up. <clears throat> Anyways, where where were we? Um, um, we set we set Halo Four. I think we do next on the list is Daisy. Uh, Daisy, I want. I've I've never played it, so I don't I don't know anything about it. So it, uh, do you, it's the original like zombie mod. It's off of Arma Two originally. Broken Broken Arrow is that what it's called? Um, yeah. you are, it's one of the first survival games. So you are in the woods on this big map, uh, kind of like it's essentially PUBG, but zombies way before PUBG oh. came out and there's different people. It's not battle Royale though. Uh, and you're surviving, you set up camps, all that sort of stuff. It is a really fun game and it's really good, but they have done nothing with it since it has come out and it, okay. it is bad because of that because nothing has changed it has not gotten better in the slightest. It is still archaic. Uh, they even went to their own engine, and it's just not good. And when games innovate mm -hmm. like PUBG do out of Arma stuff, you think, hey, DayZ, why have you not done anything? So, yeah, I, I, would... think, I think with my limited experience with it, it was a very, very cool concept, and it was like a very, very early access game. But the thing about early access is you that's not the end of development. And it felt like with DayZ, that kind of was that they didn't make major changes after that. And they didn't fix a lot of the the underlying issues. And and like you said, Will, that, that's a really good point where Arma is not a fun game to control. Like mm -hmm. it's very wonky. It has a lot of weird UI UX stuff that is quite frankly not enjoyable. And so DayZ was an Arma mod and it was like excusable. It was like, okay, you don't want to rewrite the entire game. I get it. Yeah. But them going to a new engine and not solving those issues. Whereas PUBG is literally the exact same thing. It was an Arma mod. They went to a brand new standalone engine game and they fixed all of that and they made it feel better. They fixed the inventory, et cetera. Daisy's just, it's a great idea that just never improved. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, I think it's mostly the client, like the guy who was the head of the project eventually left. And I think he was the main driving force behind it. And I think they kind of just, uh, at that point, Bohemia had already taken them in, so I feel like it just became a more of a corporate thing. It's like, oh, just put updates out rather than like innovation. So I, I would put it, I if I was a funny man, I'd put it above Cyberpunk, but I'm not a funny man, so I think I would just <clears throat> put it dead last. Really? But because I was thinking it hit big when it came out because it was very innovative. That's the problem. And but they I, never expanded on it, so I feel like it's a, I, it's a, I feel like it's above Brink or possibly even above Halo Four, and it's a, it's a very interesting argument where Halo Four is just a solid, middle of the road game, right? There's nothing yeah. amazing about it, but there's nothing awful about it. Whereas Daisy was an incredible idea, and it took the gaming world by storm. 
but then just never expanded yeah. beyond that and just I think I'm letting sort of... it taint too much of like how disappointed I am in that game but I yeah. granted I have like 80 hours in that game in the original mod and more in the actual standalone so <clears throat> I yeah let's get Kyle in on this so so Kyle I know you haven't played Daisy but what do you think about that what is what should be more valued in terms of a, a ranking system is it middle of the road but you've delivered exactly what you wanted nothing new nothing crazy or you're very innovative but 90 percent of the stuff is just not not great it's broken and not working i would i would rather have more stuff work than than have innovation that just straight up doesn't so yeah. i think i would i would i would go for for the former yeah so i i would hearing your argument see i don't know if i would put it over brink i think i would I, so we you only play Brink for an hour. I've played it That's for true. two That's or three true. hours over the years. I'll, I'll take we you saw on that. all of that game. That was the entirety of that game. It is just like five multiplayer maps. That's it. There's and nothing the, more to it. In the classic sense, I think I would rather play DayZ than play Brink for another hour. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Okay, so I'll put this. So, so it will now be Halo 4. Between... Yeah, Halo 4, Daisy, Brink, Cyberpunk. I'm just going to go okay. ahead and do that because I know nothing's shaking up that with Mirror's Edge. <laughs> Kyle, tell right. us about Mirror's Edge. <laughs> so I love Mirror's Edge unabashedly. It is not the perfect game, but how often do you see a developer mm -hmm. like DICE who has the pedigree of a battlefield, um, of the entire you know legions of fans and, and uh, all the stuff that comes with that, take an original IP that they created a, I don't think that there was ever a parkour video game before Mirror's Edge, at least not one that was like fully first person, fully fleshed out um, and take a, a series of gameplay elements like that and do a really cool iteration on it in a completely new world with a very distinctive look, very distinctive feel. And, you know, the story of Mirror's Edge, it's pretty dumb. The experience of playing Mirror's Edge when you're not stuck in an air vent is really, really cool. The first like three or four levels just all together are so distinct. I remember playing it so much. Uh, just Even uh, I think Steam had the demo out, which is literally just the prologue. And I like mastered the prologue. I could do it basically without like looking at anything. You, you could just do it by feel. And that game has stuck in my mind as being so cool. I finally played Catalyst. It's not as good, it's prettier, but I don't think that they've ever come close to the 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 feel and sort of energy that that first game had. And I think it's just really a distinctive game, a really distinctive brand, and you don't see that. I mean, you do see it, but not often. And um, from something like an EA-owned company at the time, that was very unexpected of them. Yeah, so. I think um, just two, two points to add on, definitely agree with what you said. Um, one of them is Mirror's Edge is a fairly nonviolent game. Hmm. Um, and that was pretty that was pretty rare at the time. You get yeah. an achievement for not killing anybody, for for yeah. not like or downing anybody. And it can you can you pick up a gun and shoot it or you only disarm? You can, people? but it's just you hip can, fire. but it, it's very wonky it's like, and it's it's meant to be wonky because they don't want you yeah. to do it. They want you to just yeah. keep moving. And, and it's just like, it does a really good job of being like, this is not about fighting or combat. It's just about if somebody's in your way, disarm them, but keep going. Yep. Um, and there are a lot of games that do that now, but back then there, there was not. The other thing is I can't definitively, I can't even necessarily strongly say that Mirror's Edge was the first person, first game to do this or to pioneer it. But in my heart, I feel like it is the legibility of environments and knowing mm -hmm. where you need to go. Uh, you know, it's follow the red. The primary in Mirror's Edge. Yeah. yeah. Before before that, there were too many games that were not doing that well, but now we have Assassin's Creed has improved it for a while. Uncharted has done it for a while. Even Breath of the Wild, all this all this signposting, letting, guiding, visually guiding the player based on how the environment looks. I, feel, I, I personally say Mirror's Edge, they're the ones that really shock the industry 
the game design industry with that. Yeah, and it's actually to that point specifically. They, I know because I've watched like little uh, behind the scenes stuff at the time when when it was coming out. They interviewed and obviously did I think some motion capture stuff for actual parkour um, experts or freestyle experts like uh, Sebastian Foucault, who's like the guy who this French guy who sort of came up with the idea or like uh, expanded upon the idea of free running. And um, they taught those experts, those guys talk about getting into the flow and dice took that idea and actually translated mm -hmm. it into those red sort of elements that are highlighted. And that's such a cool way of implementing something that people who are experts at the thing in real life, say they experience into the gameplay yeah. experience, which is just, I think it shows a really cool level of investment in in the believability of the experience, but also like a commitment to, hey, we want to represent this thing really well with this game and make sure that when you're playing it, it feels like what it would feel like in real life, which is which is great. Yeah. Um, yeah well, I, you haven't said anything yet, so you've clearly never played the game or hate it. I absolutely love Mirror's Edge. Uh, it's one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, I gave Catalyst a chance. Music. It's pretty good. Yeah. The the intro to that game, like when you load it up and her foot runs by and does the EA logo and it was like, this right. did it. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, it, yeah. I love that game. I love the primary colors, all that sort of stuff. I love storylines. Great. Um, yeah. That flow stuff. And the fact that you can like turn that off and like figure it out yeah. for yourself is really cool. Uh, yeah. It's this is one of those cases that the innovation and the technology this game made is what really sets it high for me. Um, yeah. Now all we have to do is figure out placement. Kyle, I'm, I'm interested where you would put on the list because Will and I are very intimately familiar with this list. And I, I'm always appreciative of a guest coming in and seeing this after, after David's reaction last week, where he was like, there are so many things wrong and out of order on this list. I don't even know where <laughs> to start. It's a perfect so. list. So, so what do you think, Kyle? So I mean, I, I don't coming coming into it like this is is sort of nerve wracking because I'm gonna step on some toes, mainly Jake's. Um, I would put it above Prey and possibly above Mass Effect Two, which I is agree. which is really difficult for me because I really love Mass Effect Two, but I think I love Mirror's Edge more, and I think. Mass Effect 2 is, in my opinion, it's a great game. It's extremely cinematic. It's got great storytelling. But as a game, I think Mirror's Edge represents more of what a game should aspire to be. And and it's it successfully does things that Mass Effect, I think, maybe necessarily... I mean, it's sort of hard because they're in two different wheelhouses. But I think, I think what Mirror's Edge sets out to do, it does better than what Mass Effect 2 does in its entirety if that makes sense so below doom above mass effect 2 is what i'm going to say for placement um i think i think you you had a really good point in there i want to emphasize which is mass effect 2 to be clear this is not my opinion <laughs> but mass effect 2 <laughs> great storytelling mirror's edge great game design mm. and i think i think that's more important what do you think will I think I'm going to have to agree. Oh, wow. Great. Mass Effect 2, bottom of the list. I knew <laughs> you were <from> around. <laughs> How did you know? Mirror's Edge. Get in there. Oh, I got to move this. Oh, down. my gosh. I'm so excited. <laughs> yes. Pending That's Ian great. beating Mirror's Edge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For this next time, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. I'm happy with this. I'm very satisfied with let's, that. Let's read it. Let's uh, read folks, it. for my podcasters out there. Our new number one is the same number one. Outer Wilds, number two, Yakuza 0, number three, Doom. New number four, Mirror's Edge. Number five, Mass Effect 2. Number six, Prey. Number seven, Shadow of the Colossus. Number eight, Horizon Zero Dawn. Number nine, Battlefield 1943. Number 10, The Outer World. Number 11, Halo 4. Number 12, DayZ. 13, Brink and Bring It Up the Rear. Because she deserves it. Cyberpunk 2077! So just real quick project progress check. According to this, the most middling game of all time is Shadow of the Clock. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really sad. <laughs> but Horizon Zero Dawn being less than middling. I'll, so far, that, I'll agree with that. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree with that. And I would definitely put Shadow of the Colossus above it. So I guess it does make I, sense. 
I think the biggest shock, honestly, is Cyberpunk all the way at the bottom. It surprisingly just makes sense right it now. It always makes it's sense. Barely a game at the oh, moment. God. Barely I hate that stupid game. Folks, thank you. Let me start the music here. Folks, thank you for tuning in this week for this hot, hot program we like to call Local Chat. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment down below on the YouTube channel or leave a review on iTunes or wherever you're listening to this. I think it's also on Google or whatever. Who cares? Joining me, to, joining me today and this week was, as always, my faithful steed, Ian Gibson. And also joining me was Kyle Bailey, one-fourth Actually, we're three-fourths of Subpixel. Um, if you enjoy this content, go to subpixelfilms.com. That'll bring straight to our YouTube channel where you can check out all sorts of hot, hot content. You can also touch, check out our Twitch, twitch twitch.tv slash subpixelteam or at subpixelteam on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, other things, OnlyFans. Definitely check it out. Uh, MySpace. MySpace. Check out our MySpace page, guys. Um... Let me think. Tomorrow, no, Saturday, 9 p.m. Eastern, Kyle and I will be rounding out the rest of Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. We're going to play the last couple missions, kind of find the fun ones, and then uh, we're going to rework some stuff and come back with another Splinter Cell game later on. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So tune in for that. It's going to be a good old, good old time. Uh, until then, I've been Will Crosby, your wonderful, wonderful host. And we will see you all next week.